Charlie McAvoy returned in style, scoring the game winner Thursday night against the Calgary Flames in his season debut. Linus Allmark remains virtually unbeatable. David Pasternak is on pace for some epic stats and an epic payday, while some unsung heroes continue to step up in the win over Calgary. Going to talk about all that, as well as tee up this weekend's action here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Friday, November 11th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube. So please do open up your podcast app, go to YouTube, search up Locked On Boston Bruins, and smash that subscribe button. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. November 11th is, of course, Remembrance Day up here in Canada, Veterans Day south of the border, and uh, we just pause to thank all those who sacrificed so that we can have uh, the lives of freedom that we do have today. Also, shout out to my mom. Uh, Happy birthday to you, and uh, I will give you a call later, of course. Now, the Bruins last night, victorious over the Calgary Flames in Charlie McAvoy's season debut. Not only did he come back, play well, but he also scored the eventual game-winning goal while also firing five hits in the 3-1 win over the Flames. He said, when you come through the locker room door, You're not greeting everybody in a suit. You're coming and getting those high fives. It was nice to be part of and to get back on the ice. Um, McAvoy, you know, was somewhat limited in his return, only 19 minutes and 18 seconds of ice time. But uh, he was out there showing off some fine skating, his ability to create, keeping pucks alive, and making some possession plays. And of course, notching the game-winning goal on a feed from Pavel Zaka. Letting a wrister fly from just inside the blue line with Nick Foligno parked in front of Dan Vladar as a screen. Uh, Great effort all around. And he admitted that he was a big old bundle of nerves before the game. But you could hardly tell once he got out on the ice. Um... Said it's the first time he's come in like this, not having a preseason to get ready. So definitely nervous all day prior to puck drop, but the good kind of nerves. You wanted to get out there, keep it simple, and uh, he credited the Bruins athletic staff and training staff for getting him back into shape, you know, three to four weeks ahead of his original timeline. TLC baby is what he said but also confidence in where you're at and the hard work that you've done to get ready. Great group of trainers in there. They do an exceptional job, and they take so much pride in what they do. He came back early. Marshy came back early, significantly early, and it's a lot of hard work uh, on them, and uh, they keep pushing you forward, and he was very excited to be back as soon as he was. Again, one goal, two shots, Five hits, two blocks in 19 minutes of ice time. Saw a minute on the power play, almost five minutes shorthanded, where the Bruins killed off six Calgary power plays. Uh, So very effective start for Charlie McAvoy. And of course, he's just going to continue to get better as he shakes off the rust and... uh, 
gets back into game speed. Montgomery on McAvoy and Marshan both scoring in the return of the lineup. He said, it's just great, isn't it? Just seems like for whatever reason, the stars are falling in line here. They're going to have to wait for Swayman to come back to get a shutout, Forbort to come back and get a hat trick, kind of speaking facetiously on how good these guys have been in their returns. Now, speaking of McAvoy, Montgomery did caution that they may rest him in one of the games this weekend against Buffalo or Vancouver. They're going to see how his shoulder responded uh, here on Friday uh, in preparation for those two games. No practice for the Bruins here on Friday. They're getting the day off in advance of a game tomorrow night in Buffalo and then back home on Sunday against the Vancouver Canucks. Going to talk about some more unsung heroes for the Bruins as well as award the Big Bear of the Night. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball. Hockey, soccer, and esports, they've got it all at betonline.net. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix, whether whether it's futures, in-game props. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more at BetOnline, where the game starts. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every single day. Now check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on your favorite podcast app and YouTube. I forgot to mention off the top that you can, of course, find the podcast on Twitter at LockedNHLBruins. Same handle on Instagram. You can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, unpaid for checkmark on uh, Twitter at ENC McLaren as long as it lasts. Now you can hear today that I'm not fully 100%. Been battling some sort of respiratory virus. It's not the Rona. Tested myself a few times, but uh, having a hard time talking. Been coughing a lot. Took yesterday afternoon to rest. Hopefully I can shake it off soon. But, of course, the podcast waits for no one. And last night's Big Bear of the Night is being awarded to Linus Olmark, who was once again stellar between the pipes, making 31 saves for his league-leading 10th win of the season. How good has this guy been to start the season? Well, he's tied a franchise record for hitting his 10th win in the fewest decisions, matching Tuka Rask, Tim Thomas, Gary Cheevers, and Ross Brooks. In fact, he has won 36 of his 50 starts with the Bruins, second in team history for most wins through 50 starts, behind only Brooks, who played back in the 70s. He ranked second in the NHL with a 1.95 goals against average, fourth in save percentage at 936. And those numbers improve on home ice where he's 6 0 0, a 947 save percentage. He said he's really calm when the puck is in their end. He has a lot of confidence in the penalty kill, a lot of confidence in the D zone coverage. And, um,. Montgomery said he just looks so calm and poised. He's seeing the puck at such a high level that as a coach, you're sitting there seeing how confident he is, and that gives you confidence. Just an unreal start for Linus Allmark, and uh, to think that some people were critical of the signing, $5 million for this guy right now is an absolute steal. Uh, A lot of people were wanting them to hold on to Dan Vladar, who took the loss for Calgary last night. 
Not that he played poorly, but Linus Olmark has just been on another level so far for the Bruins this season. And getting the Lions' share of the starts with Jeremy Swayman. Uh, hopefully Swayman can get healthy down the road to give him some rest so that Olmark can be um, fresh for when the games matter most. But no question at the moment that he is the team's number one option in net. Another guy who's been stepping up, mentioned him a couple times lately, is Connor Clifton. He played top pair minutes alongside Hampus Lindholm last night, even in uh, McAvoy's return. He only had 10 seconds more ice time than McAvoy, but he did have a goal, two shots, two hits, and continues to prove that he belongs in the lineup each and every night, and maybe not just in a bottom pairing role. Uh, he says he's just playing the same way that he always has been. Uh, when they went to 5D a couple times this year because of injury, whoever he's partnered, or partnered up with, he feels comfortable out there being loud, trying to communicate, and um, he even had a huge hit last night on former Bruin Milan Lucic, which grabbed the attention of fans, the coaches, and players alike. McAvoy said, that's just cliffy hockey, baby. He's an exceptional compete level. He's got high confidence right now, and... Uh, a little bit of opportunity was all he really needed to kind of explode. Confidence from the guys, the coaching staff, to see him take it to that next level and put it on display. And he really fits into Jim Montgomery's coaching style where he wants his defenseman to be more active with the puck, active with the play. You saw that on his goal. He, he fired the shot, chased down his own rebound, popped it in behind Vladar, and... Uh, he was excited to get those two great eight chances, get his Corsi up, drive the net. The rebound was just sitting there. Credit to Felino for going hard to the net and a great pass by Nosek to uh, get the puck to him in, to begin with. I think there's now like 17 Bruins who have scored at least one goal this season. Thomas Nosek being one of the main guys Still looking for his first goal. Hopefully that comes soon for him. Nick Foligno didn't have any points on Thursday, but I've already mentioned him a couple times in terms of impacting the game. He was parked in front of the net uh, for Boston's first two goals. Picked up three hits to lead Bruins forwards. Even dropped the gloves with Kevin Rooney after the Flames forward delivered a hit from behind on Nosik. Nick Foligno has been having a great year, Montgomery said. He's helping the Bruins win in so many different ways. You can't find him enough ice time. Uh, the third and fourth lines have been so integral to Boston's uh, success so far. And that's what you need to be a truly competitive contending team in the NHL. An effective bottom six. Nick Foligno has been called upon to be the captain, the leader down there. And he has uh, raised his game and been as good or better as they could have hoped for in that role. McAvoy has been able to watch him from above, seeing that he's been playing awesome. It's been so fun to watch all these guys play, he said. Everybody has had nights where they've chipped in, been part of why they're winning. And it's the best thing to watch for McAvoy, certainly for us fans. It's... So fun to watch. Somebody step up every night, and it's a grueling regular season. Everybody has to step up at times, and that will be even more so the case in the playoffs. So the Bruins now 12-2 and to begin the season, 8-0-0 on home ice, matching a franchise record for the longest home winning streak to start a season. Uh, they are... Still second in the NHL behind the Vegas Golden Knights, who are now 13-2 uh, and two with an 867 point percentage. The Bruins tops with a plus 25 
goal differential. And these two teams will play twice in the span of a week in early December. We're going to talk about the Bruins' upcoming schedule, including a pair of back-to-back -back games this weekend. But I want to thank you once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. Don't forget to check out the Locked On uh, Today podcast, the biggest stories in sports, game recaps, and the take of the day available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Like I said, the Bruins are off today uh, as they prepare to travel to Buffalo to play the Sabres tomorrow night. The Sabres hosted Jack Eichel and the Vegas Golden Knights on Thursday. Eichel had a hat-trick in the third period and defeated the Sabres by a score of 7-4. to uh, The Sabres, at the moment, sit uh, they've dropped down to 7th. In the Atlantic Division after losing four games in a row here. Uh, still have a positive goal differential, but it's a very winnable game for the Boston Bruins. Excuse the noise in the background. My wife is making her breakfast smoothie. No, no worries. Then on Sunday, the Bruins will take on the Vancouver Canucks, who are also off to a rough start. They're 4, 7, and 3 through 14 games and uh, there's a lot of talk there about possible turnover, possible coaching change, rebuilding. They will be taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs on Saturday night so they too will be coming off a back-to-back -back, uh, situation so rest will not be an excuse they'll be having to travel across the border as well. So two very winnable games on tap here this weekend for the Boston Bruins, and that will continue later next week as well when they host the Philadelphia Flyers and the Chicago Blackhawks, two teams that are expected to be in the Connor Bedard sweepstakes this season. Philadelphia off to a better-than-expected start, although they lost last night to the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, Chicago, uh, 13 points through 13 games, perhaps better than expected there as well, uh, but still, uh, two very winnable games for the Bruins. Looking further ahead, though, it is going to get much more challenging to end November and to begin December. After that game against the Blackhawks on Saturday the 19th, the Bruins will travel to Florida to take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then two nights later, the Florida Panthers. They'll come home to play the Carolina Hurricanes on Friday the 25th. That will be the Black Friday game. A couple days off before playing the Tampa Bay Lightning once again to close out November on the 29th. Then on December 3rd, they host the defending Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche. They'll host the Vegas Golden Knights on the 5th of December. On the 7th, they travel to Colorado to take on the Avalanche. Get a bit of a reprieve as they go and visit the Arizona Coyotes at Mullet Arena on Friday the 9th. But then they finish off that road trip with a game in Vegas against the Golden Knights on Sunday, December 11th, which will be must-watch TV. So that's a pretty difficult uh, nine-game stretch there. Two games against the Lightning, a game against the Panthers, two games against the Avalanche, two games against the Golden Knights, and then a supposed gimme against the the Coyotes, although they've been playing pretty well as of late, and their goalie, Karel Vamelka, been outstanding. So in that kind of interesting atmosphere, not necessarily a gimme there for the Boston Bruins. So as good as this team has been to start the season, they've been banking points, top of the Eastern Conference, a um, couple, well, four winnable games on deck. But then after that is where the rubber is really going to meet the road. And uh, 
you know, Swayman isn't back by then. Might have Keith Kincaid making a couple of those starts unless they want to ride with Ulmark as there's no back-to-backs over that tough stretch. That's the only uh, saving grace there, perhaps, where they could get him into most of those games. Swayman, of course, remains week-to-week, and Derek Forbort was placed on LTIR in order to make room for Charlie McAvoy. All right, you're all caught up when it comes to Boston Bruins news. I'll be back, of course, on Monday to recap both games over the weekend and uh, to get you ready for the week ahead. Uh, I hope you're all doing well, taking care of yourselves, taking care of each other. And uh, I'm going to go rest my voice now. I've been watching, uh, what have we been watching? Andor, if you haven't watched Andor yet, I highly recommend that. Uh, Probably my favorite Star Wars Thing ever. I'm not a huge Star Wars guy, but this is a very grounded human story with many ties to present day, so do check that out if you haven't already. Uh, we watched the Jerry Falwell Jr. doc on Disney Plus last night, which was crazy and eye-opening. Um, I've been binging on Tourage lately after watching Ballers bit of a guilty pleasure doesn't really hold up but uh haven't been feeling great mentally physically so it's something to uh mindless to to occupy my time and i've also been reading the stand by stephen king again also not quite timely in terms of present circumstances but one of my favorite books and i'm really enjoying that still so that's it friends please do take care And we'll talk to you again here Monday on Locked On Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.